MEPs vote later today on proposals to set minimum energy standards for buildings across the EU. Among the changes, and Kira is quite exercised about this, I have to <laughs> warn you in advance. Trigger warning here: uh, the energy rating. You do trigger me quite a lot, in fairness. <laughs> the energy rating of existing residential buildings will have to meet a minimum E rating by 2030. And gradually improve from there on uh, onward. Now, you would think an E rating by 2030 wouldn't actually be that taxing. But nah, not so for you, Kira. Uh, Even see, though your house already is an E rating. I'm there on the E rating by 2030 because my house is an E rating. My house is a leaky sieve. I live in an old house. It was built in 1882. It's a nice looking house, but Jesus, it's freezing. If I was ever selling it now, I'm actually shooting myself in the foot. But it's cold and there's no two ways about it. I don't turn on my heat 24-7. I'm with one of those texters that texted earlier to say one of my heating systems was an electric blanket when it's really bad. Because you can't afford to to heat it. But also, what they're saying is is from 2030, I'm going to have to improve its rating. And I don't know how I'm going to do that. Because if I'm going to wrap it around or if I'm going to put in double glazing where we're existing kind of... um, period uh, windows exist and stuff we're talking tens and tens of thousands and that would be at a time when in 10 years time where I might be not that far off retirement I just don't know how people are expected who live in old houses to bring them up to modern things without bankrupting themselves and I actually just don't know and and great by the way if the government is going to give me the money to do it I'm there for that that's fantastic I'd love to live in a warm house as well but if they're not going to do it I've no idea how I, I, I would come up I, with the cash I, I, and look the, the only point I'd make to you and I made it to you in the last hour is like no matter what we discuss when it comes to uh, improving the environment whether it's you know, patio heaters whether it's burning uh, solid fuel whether it's uh, reducing agriculture emissions whether it's reducing transport emissions you're argument is always I, I don't want to do this I don't want to do no I, I like it's important we say the plan but I actually don't want to do like at some point we have to do some of these measures can you we just can't tell me people. one thing and I mean, it's a genuine question how yeah. me retrofitting my house saves the planet because I don't turn on my heating I, I just go oh, cold see, I, I put on jumpers and snoozies I don't buy this thing that you don't turn on you. of course you turn on your I heating I put it on Everybody for about an hour a day same as anybody else but my and house you, is colder do you know what you will, you'll turn on your, if your house is better insulated you'll turn on your heat less that is uh, uh, just a fact uh, and I so, don't think I could turn on my house any my heat any less. Right. Uh, well, look, maybe you're uh, an absolute exception, but for most people, they don't stay in a cold house. They turn on the heat. If your house is warmer, you will turn on the heat. I would less. suggest so actually. The are, is it actually your argument that the 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 worse your rating is? Are you actually arguing the worse your rating is, the less the less heat you'll turn on? No, I'm on. saying the worse your rating is for a lot of people in this country. They just go cold, and that's what I do, and that's what lots of people do, and particularly older people. I don't think they are. So don't bother improving our housing. No, but but that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this is I don't turn on, even though I live in a cold house, I don't turn on my heating any more than other people. I wrap up warm in the house with clothes and layers because I have no choice. So I'm not actually damaging the environment. And now I'm going to be made pay maybe tens and tens and tens of thousands to tick a box. The logical... The logical follow-on from your argument is there's no point in us upgrading our houses. Sure, we're not going to we're not going to turn on the heat any any less if we, our houses are warmer. That's the logical follow-on. I, I think that's a daft logic. I have to say. I think there's a definite logic to it, and I just don't know how people are going to afford it. But look, let us know. I I I. I I, I would love, by the way, by the way, if there's a grant that's going to cover all of it, I'm there for it. If there isn't, I don't know where but, I'm going to come up with 60k. But don't ask me to do anything about it. Well, I don't have 60k, Shane. I just okay. don't have it. Well, no, nobody's asking you to have 60k. We're talking about E-ratings here by 2030. But anyway, look, let's bring Kieran Cuff, uh, Green Party MEP for Dublin, in on this. Kieran, just tell us exactly what is happening in the, in the Parliament later today. So there is a vote uh, just after uh, midday today uh, on this file. It's called the uh, Energy Performance of uh, Buildings uh, Directive. Um, and it's not the first time we've had a directive like this. Uh, it's, uh, we, had the, we had one 20 years ago. Uh, but essentially, the kernel of this directive is that we improve the energy rating uh, of buildings all around Europe. Why do we do this? Because buildings are responsible for about a third of the greenhouse gas emissions in Europe. Uh, so, yeah, it is about climate. Kieran, Kieran sorry, about sorry to interrupt. You're just, you're coming in and out a little bit. I, I don't know just if you can... Just talking to you again there now? Yeah, perfect. Now, if you, yeah, that's perfect. What, whatever you, you did there, it's, it's improving. So, sorry, uh, keep making your point. S- so there's a few reasons for doing this. One is, obviously, uh, we're in a climate crisis and buildings are responsible for about a third of our greenhouse gas emissions. So that's one reason for doing that. But there's other reasons as well. The rising cost of fuel, of gas and oil, uh, has been a real challenge this winter with eye-watering bills coming through the door. 
So the more we insulate homes, the more we insulate consumers from these very high fuel costs. I absolutely take the point, this is expensive, but there is a huge amount of support coming from the European Union. There's the Recovery and Resilience Facility, there's the Invest EU funds, uh, there's a lot of other sources of money. Uh, and that will come in, in the form of grants uh, for people who are on uh, decent incomes. And for people who can't afford it, uh, there will be fully subsidised uh, work uh, costs available uh, from uh, SEAI and other bodies. And, yeah, because, because know, Kieran, sorry to cut across you, because, I mean, you heard the argument Kira was making and lots of people get texting, getting in touch, saying the same thing, saying, look, I'd love to upgrade my house, but I can't afford to do it. And that's why there will be funding available. The European Central Bank is saying that they will make available money. The European Investment Bank is rebranding itself as the Climate Bank. And they're already putting hundreds of millions of euro into homes in Dublin to upgrade them. So the money is real. The money is there. And those funds will increase over the coming years. So that is important. But Kira made a point about wrapping up well in a house, and I absolutely endorse that. And that makes an awful lot of sense, rather than having everybody walking around in a T-shirt with the heating on full blast. So it makes sense to wear an extra jumper. But it also makes sense to gradually upgrade our buildings as we head towards 2050. Because as we get older, uh, we need... um, We need more comfort in our homes. If we have children, we want to make sure that they are safe and warm. And certainly throughout COVID, we realise the importance of having decent homes and decent living spaces. And it doesn't all have to be done at one go. Typically, you replace a boiler every 20 years. Um, windows, sometimes you upgrade them uh, every 10 or 20 years. You could put in secondary glazing if it's an old house. Plus, if it's a very old house, if it's from um, two centuries ago, many of these buildings are listed and actually heritage buildings aren't affected by this directive. So it's only targeting the the, the buildings where we can, okay. at a um, reasonable cost, upgrade them. Just finally, though, I mean, the cost is 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 large. I mean, I looked at, I, uh, we got our house uh, rate, I think it's a C raising, and I was looking to, to upgrade it to sort of B plus or A minus kind of area. But the money involved was, was is, was and is prohibitive. Um, no, I mean, it is, it's you, high at the moment, You, you wouldn't get it back. Like, I'll be totally honest, I looked at it. Uh, now, I'm not saying I won't do it, um, but I'm saying financially you will not get it back in reduced, uh, in reduced bills. I I think that'll change over time. I think, well, we had the crazy gas prices over the winter and electricity bills. That's come down a bit, but it's much higher than it was before. It all depends on what kind of works you do. I'm hearing of people putting solar panels on their roof and getting a three-year payback on that. But obviously, if you put external insulation on, it's very hard to get those monies back. We're coming out of a supply chain uh, bottleneck and out of COVID and out of Ukraine. So there is very high costs in Ireland at the moment compared to uh, the rest of Europe. But this file isn't about 2023 or 2024. It's about looking ahead to 2030, 33 and all the way towards 2050 and providing a roadmap for that. So I, I think while in the short term, there are challenges. In the long term, I think this will insulate us from the kind of price hikes we saw this winter uh, okay. and from what might be coming down the tracks. Kieran Cough, Green Party MEP for Dublin. Thank you for talking to News Talk Breakfast. Let us know you're taking all this.